Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here. I wanted to pop on and talk about the best exercise for your hormones, depending on where you're at in your cycle. If you are thinking, oh, oh I don't have a cycle. I don't have a cycle. I'm in menopause. I had a hysterectomy. What do I do? Oh, I'll get there. I'll get there. Um, this is, you know, something that I, I mentioned in my video the other day that I was going to pop on and talk about. I had some questions. I had a lot of people have questions on this. So I'm going to dive into this. Um, two things before I dive into all the, the, the good stuff here. Um, I, I made a mistake this morning. I ran out of contact solution and I was in such a hurry. I didn't realize, and I had ordered it online cause I didn't buy it at the store. I didn't pick up my normal stuff. They just brought me other stuff. I was like, sure. That's fine. Whatever. Same stuff, whatever contact solution. It was not the same. It was not the same contact solution. I didn't know that they made stuff that would burn your eyeball. So I look like I have pink eye. It's not pink eye. It's not funny. It really hurts. It really hurts. Um, it's not, it's not pink eye. But look at that. Look how red, like my whole thing. I just look like I have conjunctivitis all over the place. So I'll be wearing contacts for a while and my eye matches my shirt. That's one. Two. As I get into talking about exercise and hormones and everything else, one of the most common things that I hear from women is about working out and I have to do this set or I got to do this or I'm supposed to go every day or this and this and this. And if your exercise doesn't look like this specific thing, then it's not good enough or then it's not the right thing or then you're not burning fat or blah, 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 blah. And none of that stuff is true. Stop holding yourself to a standard that is not right for the body that you're in right now. The body you're in right now is the body you're in right now feeling really good all day, every day, sleeping well, recovering well. If it is great, that's freaking awesome. If the body that you're in right now sleeps like crap, maybe you maybe have little, little humans waking you up at night. Maybe you have a cat waking you up at night constantly, huh? Right. Are you, are you stressed out? Do you have a huge energy crash at 3 PM every day? Is your cycle terrible? Do you have horrible mood swings, PMS? Do you have really heavy periods? Are you really struggling with those areas? If so, you are living in a body that is not going to do well, pushing itself every single day with specific workouts. Yeah, get swole, get ripped, blah. But that's actually, that's not how women talk about it. They're like, I want to get toned. I just want to lean out more. I just want to slim, slim down and tone up a little bit. That's what I want. I mean, great. But the body that you're living in is not able to, it does not have the capacity to be physically pushed like that because it is too stressful for your system. Your system is already way too stressed out. Your system's already at its capacity. It's barely holding on. It's barely getting through a regular day. And I know, I know that so many times we're like, oh, if I just work out and get to the gym, I'm going to have more energy. Sure. But you have to have a certain baseline of energy first. You have to have a certain function happening first. And if you aren't having that, there's no way that you just going to the gym and adding more and piling more on is going to do it. It leads you in the wrong direction. So where I, where I see this most commonly with women is that something happens in their life. They get stress or, um, illness or something, right? Oh my gosh, my, my cycle's getting wonky or I'm going through perimenopause. Cause this is also just stressful enough to going through perimenopause and menopause. Yay. Carrie, I learned that the hard way last week. Oh, Carrie. Oh, <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. Mm. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, but yes. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> um, going through going through a hormonal shift and change like this is super super stressful. Giving birth is a hormonal shift and change that is really stressful. Getting your gallbladder out, all these things, having thyroid issues. These are major <laughs> traumas on the female body that then your system has to recover from. And if it does not recover well enough for whatever reason, it leads to uh, multiple other things, right? There's like nutrient depletion added in there. There's cortisol issues, adrenal issues, your liver's not processing, right? So a bunch of crap is happening, right? Essentially what it feels like for you is that you're like, dang it, this wasn't great. Oh, I got to get back on track. I gained some weight. Oh, I'm feeling really sluggish. I'm feeling like, bleh. Ugh. 
pile of hot garbage. Got to get back on track. Yes, totes. So you try and force yourself to go to the gym. You set your alarm for 5 a.m. to get up to go. You set your alarm to just do some movement or go for more walks or do something. And you might do it once. But then the next day you're so tired or so sore or so whatever that you can't recover and get back to it. Because you overdid it. Your system wasn't ready. It was too much. And you really feel like, well, I worked out like this last year. I love these workouts. I love these classes. I love X, Y, Z. Yes, but you are living in a different body then. Your meat suit <laughs> that you live in was functioning differently then than it's functioning now. So the body you're living in is not at a capacity for you to be able to do that. And so often we just try to jump back into something we did before and it's not going to work. And it's the same thing with, with a diets, nutrition, all these other things where you're like, oh my gosh, I, I did this diet before and it really worked. And now I'm doing it again and it's not working for me. It's not the diet. Well, if the diet really worked, you wouldn't have to do it again. But it's not the diet, right? Your system is different and you have to work with what your system needs right now. So this is the biggest. So the hardest thing mentally is not going back there and doing that. And of course we all do it. We all do it. We're like, oh, I was running five miles before. So I, I just got to get, I got to get back into it. Maybe I'll start with two miles. Two miles is easy. And you end up being super sore from running those two miles and have, taking four days to recover. That's not normal. And think, God, I, I just got to get into shape. I got to force myself to do it. If I force myself to do it, my body will get used to it. Ugh, grind, 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 grind. No, your system's not ready and it's suffering. Stop pushing it for what it's not meant to do because you're adding more stress. That's going to make the issue worse. This is a fun talk, right? <laughs> but it's true. We, and then you end up feeling bad, you're feeling guilty, and then you end up not doing anything because you're so exhausted, fatigued, and it didn't get you anywhere anyway. Running two days a week, you know, it's better than nothing, right? Oh, yes, movement is good. Yes, all the things, of course, right? But you end up feeling so exhausted, so fatigued, so, so much more like garbage that you're actually not making actual health progress then, right? Ugh. You know what I mean? So, so in, in mind with, you know, keeping in mind when I talk about these things here and talk about hormones for women, so many times we expect our bodies to do something and perform something that we did not prepare it for, right? You would not ever, if you have kids, right, you would not ever wake your kid up like at 3 a.m. and send them out for a 10 mile run without feeding them, right? No, they're not gonna do well. Why is your body different? That's essentially what's happening. Nutrient depleted, not fueled, totally exhausted, and muscle tissue recovery is not there. When your system is stressed out, when you have hormonal um, issues, when you're going through per perimenopause, your system is gonna need different recovery time. And it's gonna need different fuel and different tools to help push it along, to improve that recovery time. If you're not giving it those tools, of course your body's not gonna just get up and go, here we go, recover really well, la la la. That's, that's a normal response then. So it's not you, you're not doing it wrong, right? You're just, your meat suit needs a little, a little more care, right? Um, I talked about this the other day, you know, like, like if you keep driving, you know, if you drive a certain path to work, right? Oh, I drive to work. I drive down this road. And every day you drive this road, you get a hole in your tire and the tire leaks air, right? You get a, you got to patch your tire, right? Okay. Yep. Get there. I got to patch my tire every day. Yep. Gosh, my, I get a flat tire every day on the way to work and I patch my tire and then I keep going, right? Well, are you going to keep patching the tire? Are you going to keep trying to like force something to happen, right? Or are you going to actually look at the road? What's wrong with the road? Oh, there's a nail in the road. All right, well, let's either remove the nail or let's take a different road, <laughs> right? It's, it's stop repeating the same things over and over again, expecting something different, right? Care for the system differently. Take a different path and help your system work differently. So that's what I want to talk about as I talk about these things because this is not an exclusive thing. I'm not listing specific exercises. Of course, if you like a certain type of movement, do that. These are just different things to keep in mind for what where your system's at at different points in the cycle. And again, I'll go through menopause, perimenopause things as well. So hormone cycle, day one is the first day of your period. Day 14 is about when you ovulate. Day 28 is when that ends. Of course, this is different for every body, right? Every female body. So there's maybe longer or shorter. That may be natural for you. After having children, this can change too. That's fun. 
Oh, so the winter cycle just changes because you had kids. Yay! Okay. Um, and, and this is also going to be different and give yourself grace and give your body time to adjust after big hormonal changes like that too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I was an athlete in high school and college and even beyond, right? And in between there, I had three children. <laughs> Took me a minute to feel like I was an athlete again after having all those babies. <laughs> um, so when we're looking at the estrogen phase, estrogens in this first couple of weeks here, estrogens on the rise more, this is going to give you more strength ability, right? Your body's going to be able to build muscle and repair muscle faster and better here. So focusing more on strength. Does this mean you have to go um, do a ton of weightlifting? No, right? You can do body weights. There's a ton of different ways to do this, but think and focus on building that lean muscle more because your body can build more lean muscle here easier and recover if you happen to push yourself harder here. If you go for a 10 mile run instead of a five mile run, you're gonna recover better here versus here. So just keep that in mind for whatever it is that you're training for and whatever it is that you're going for. Strength is going to be a benefit here for you. So gear your workouts towards that. If you use bands, you know, um, st stretchy bands, if you, you know, whatever it is, it's fine. Progesterone phase, everything slows down. Your body does have a harder time recovering, um, muscle building, everything else. It's very different. So you can do same exercises, but focus on mobility, focus on um, taking care of your physical frame, focus on lymphatic drainage, focus on recovery time. Recovery time is faster here, so you can push harder and reco re recover faster, harder here. Does that make sense? The recovery happens faster here. It happens slower here. So you need to focus on that more. So if you are going to be lifting heavier here, because you're like, I got I got goals to get to. I got these thing, this thing I'm training for. Cool. But give yourself a little bit more time to recover in between sets, in between lifts, right? It takes me longer to lift when I'm in this phase versus this phase. And it'll be a very similar you know, lifting session. I take more time. I make sure my system is, is just a little bit more rested. I prep differently for my, for my body. I add more fuel. I add more protein. I add more healthy fats, right? I'm making sure my system gets the fuel it needs. The minerals. Oh my God, the minerals. Remember when your body's in progesterone, your system's not uploading hydration or minerals the same way as it is over here. Being mineral depleted sucks. Oh, it doesn't feel good. And it's terrible, terrible for recovery. So keep that in mind that you are going to need to fuel differently, hydrate differently, all those things for this progesterone phase in order to, to get and keep the best results. Now, if you're wondering, okay, I don't know where my hormones are at. I, I have issues. Um, I'm in menopause or perimenopause, or I think I'm there. What do I do? Um, the Dutch test is a fantastic way to get your hormones tested. This gets sent right to your house. You take it, you send it in, and then we go over the results together. It tests estrogens, progesterones, testosterones, cortisol levels, nutrient deficiencies, neurotransmitters. I'll put a link here where you guys can check this out um, and learn more about this and see how this can help your workouts. I, oh, in the past 15, at least 15 Dutch tests that I have gone over with women, I have specifically told them, listen, you need to back off the exercise that you're doing. I know you love it. And I know it's like, it's like helpful as you can go for walks, but you cannot try and force yourself to do this because of where the cortisol levels are. You're working yourself into a bigger hole. That information is really helpful. And that information is also then, for a lot of gals, what they tell me is it's validating for how they feel like, I thought I would just wasn't working hard enough. I thought I wasn't giving enough effort. Yeah, it's very different. And, oh, this is super fun. So a gal, <laughs> so funny. A gal I've been working with, she's in the, uh, the 12 week that I have going right now, so fun. She was like, oh, you know what's so crazy is that I just felt so motivated the other day I, I, I just had to go for a walk. I had so much energy because we're working on our hormones and getting her body more nutrients and turning all these things around. And she's like, yeah, I have always felt like I should go for walks or get more exercise and all these other things. But I was so fatigued and so tired that when I forced myself, I just, I didn't feel good afterwards necessarily. She was, I had so much extra energy after my day of work that I wanted to go for a walk. I walked for two miles and came back and still felt good. And I was like, that's incredible. She's like, yeah, that hasn't happened. And I don't even know how long. I don't even know how long. 
that's the perfect thing to get started with. That's the perfect way to move into fitness and exercise for you. Really, again, addressing your hormones and cycle as well so that you're not pushing your body too much and not backtracking, not digging yourself a bigger hole while trying to do the right thing. Uh, for women who are on menopause, if you're still having hot flashes, if you're still having a lot of fatigue and disrupted sleep, your system is having a huge influx of cortisol as well. So yes, exercise is important. Yes, weightlifting is even more important for women that are in menopause because you need to build that muscle tissue. But it's different for women in menopause. And man, if you really aren't getting that recovery time in, again, it's you dig that hole faster. Oh, that happens so fast. So it's really important that you're addressing, okay, strength piece and really getting that nutrient in to help your body and help with recovery. Yeah. So the one thing I do want to tell you is what's the one thing that messes up all this stuff? The big overriding thing when it comes to exercise, the biggest thing that messes it all up is cortisol. Your friend and mine, your friend and mine, cortisol. Cortisol, cortisol will ruin all this. Cortisol is going to take all that, all the beautiful lean muscle you worked so hard to build and just break it down and use it for energy and then store anything you're eating in your fat cells. Mmm, lovely. Mmm, lovely. Mmm, thanks friend. Thank you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No thank you, right? How do we manage that? How do we work beyond that then? How do we make sure? First off, knowing where your hormones are at so you know exactly what path you need to take. That's really important. And then getting the right activity levels for you in the different phases, whether you're still having a cycle and it's estrogen versus progesterone, or if you're in menopause and it's a different level, you know, uh, stepping into, right? <laughs> stepping into, wading into, tiptoeing in to those waters. You know, you can't cannonball in. That's way too much shock on the system. Way too much shock on the system. Tiptoe in, get your system used to it, let that recovery happen and make sure cortisol is being managed. That with the right fuel before, during, and after workouts is gonna get you the right results. And that's, that's one of the most amazing things. So in the, you know, when I work with women in the 12 week challenge that I have, um, for the gals that have been doing workouts before and they're like, yeah, I still wanna continue, you know, a few times a week, yep, totally fine. I give them protocols to make sure that they're doing the correct thing before, during, and after their workouts. That we can continue, continue, you know, supporting the body nutritionally. And then if they are able to add to that, great. But again, continue to support the body nutritionally. From there, right, from there, you can do so many more things. You can push yourself harder. You can train more than once a day and not break your system down. So often we actually are overtraining the female body because we're not addressing hormones, we're not addressing proper nutrition, and we're not addressing the cortisol. We're not addressing the cortisol. So your system gets overtrained and it gets fatigued and broken down really quickly. Even if you're like, well, I'm only working out for 30 minutes, it still might be too much. If your system is nutrient depleted, which again, we can find out on the Dutch test, it's still too much. So, all right, that's what I got for you guys tonight. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm, here's a resource for you. Again, my goal is to just educate women. The more you know about how your body works and functions, the better decisions you can make for your health moving forward. Um, yes. And my podcast is called the female health solution. I talk a lot more about health there. I also interview a lot of amazing people. Uh, so I got some fun episodes there. And then my book is called the female fat solution. This is on Amazon. And I also have a book called the female menopause solution as well. If you are a menopause and need info on that. So, all right, let me know your questions. Let me know if you have other questions or want me to do a video on another topic or something I've mentioned, let me know. And I absolutely can. All right. Have a great night and I will see you later.